Yes, politics is where we're looking at next. And yes, you did see there, APC, that's the All Progressives Congress, conducted its ward congresses uh, over the weekend, not without some contention. Some states were in particular contention uh, because there you had power blocks which were going to be contesting against one another. Don't forget that just, um, I think, on Thursday or Friday, on Thursday, there had been a Supreme Court ruling on the situation in uh, the on the candidacy of Governor, uh, Governor Roti Makiri Dolu of Ondo State. And there were those who felt that that ruling given by the Supreme Court had implication for the ward congresses which were being held or which were going to be held over the weekend. Uh, one of the ministers in the president's cabinet, uh, Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Mr. Mr. Festus Kayamo, SAN, had raised issue about uh, the implications of that particular ruling, saying that for what Congress is to be conducted under the leadership of the current caretaker committee, uh, headed by Governor May Malabuni of Yobe State, uh, could prove a problem for the APC moving ahead. Uh, but on Friday, they were swiftly countered by, this, by, by the legal advisor to the APC, um, Sani Akintola SAN, who uh, said that the Congresses should go ahead and that the APC members should not be afraid and that they should move ahead with courage that, no, the Supreme Court judgment was clear in its ruling. So there was no narrow miss there. Well, the PDP seems to be capitalizing on that. They have issued a statement saying that the APC Congresses were not on void. What that has, I mean, is left to see how that is going to pan out. But now we've seen what has happened and what the fallouts are going to be. We have a few observers and those who have their issues with that party, with the Congresses. We have um, Mr. Ezema Wagu, who is the Executive Director of Peering Advocacy and Advancement Center in Africa. And is also the convener of Say No Campaign Nigeria. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily this morning. <laughs> Thank you. It's Good been a while. You. Yeah. So. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we also have with us um, Honorable Nda Aaron. Um, thank you so much for coming on thank Sunrise Early this morning. He is a Director General, Save APC Now, and also former Senior Special Assistant on Mobilization to Governor Yaya Pelo. You're welcome to Sunrise Early. Thank Eli. you for having me. Um, let me start with you, Mr. Ezenwa, because for a number of people, they'll be asking why we should be interested. Oftentimes, political parties are very, um, they're very protective of their turf. And, you know, they, they want what remains, what happens in political parties to remain in political parties. So much so that sometimes when their members take them to court over issues, they suspend their members. So uh, of, it would seem that somehow, as Nigerians, we have learned to mind our businesses and not take note of what is happening within political parties. Why do you think we should be interested in the ward congresses that took place over the weekend in the APC? Well, I, I think uh, we should be interested, not just in the World Congresses, we should be interested in the vehicle for leadership recruitment in our country. And uh, as far as uh, we're concerned today, that would be the political parties. There is, there is no other way through which you can emerge a leader in our democracy except through the political parties. So if we play shy and pretend that it's their internal matters, uh, at the end of the day, we bear the consequences of their uh, actions or inactions. Uh, so it's important that as enthusiasts, democratic enthusiasts, election enthusiasts, that we don't just um, uh, show that kind of perfunctory interest. And so that, that's the reason why, whether it's PDP, APC, any other party, the, the truth is that we want to get excite Nigerians to that point where you are following. Even if you are not um, at the risk of being called a meddlesome interloper, but whatever it is, we have to be interested, we have to follow, and where they're not doing things right, we should be able to call them out and, and ensure that at the end of the day they do what is right. Because the challenge that we have in our electoral process a good chunk of it comes from a lack of internal party democracy. Whether so, you are talking about the litigious nature of, of you know, pre-election matters that eventually carry on into, um, even when people have been elected, they enjoy the, the prerequisites of office, and at the end of the day, the court says, hey, you are not the rightful owner. And then those things are not refunded. Those are public funds that are actually... Uh, so at the end of the day, it's, it's... And political parties are actually public institutions.
uh, even though they are founded by individuals. But at the end of the day, because of the critical role they play in democracy, we just have to be interested. Mm. So from the interest that you, we, <laughs> I don't want to say we, now we, by, by we, I mean journalists that CSOs yes. have shown over the weekend. Um, were you concerned about the congresses that APC was going to conduct, given the Supreme Court ruling that came out just a few days before? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not particularly interested. I know that politicians, whether for or against, will always have something to do. But the, the, the grain for me is, is to say, are you following the constitution of your political party? If you, what kind of example? Because as a, as a dominant uh, position party, the expectation is that you lead by force of personal example. So if we are not seeing that example, if if we feel a vagrant, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, of your of your party principles and guidelines, then there, there's a challenge with that. And for me, really, I've always worried about when interventions become bureaucracy. And what do I mean? You, we, it's not just in the political parties. Everywhere, we get something. We say we want to intervene, solve a problem, and get out. And then at the end of the day, the the, the intervention becomes bureaucracy. That's why you can have presidential committees that have run for twenty years. It's supposed to be a committee. Finish your work, wind up, and go. But whether it's caretaker, anything that is caretaker, I have a challenge with that. The, the, the APC must do what it has to do to quickly ensure that you have a substantive leadership for the political party in a way that guarantees that the, the, the principles, the guidelines, the constitution of the political party is followed. Those are my, my personal concerns and worries. Well, I don't know what the concerns of Mr. Nda Aaron will be, Honorable Nda Aaron, because I'm wondering, you know, the title of his group is Save APC Now. <laughs> what is happening to the APC that it needs saving? Uh, actually, um, what is happening in our party is highly disturbing. And, you know, there is no way you can bury the truth. Uh, the issues in the APC that has its root from the sacking of uh, Adams of Shomole, that is what uh, gave rise to this uh, crisis. And if you look at it from that foundation, even the man that conveyed the neck meeting. He was not in any way qualified to do such. But you want to save the party? You take a decision? You bring in a governor? Then how would you be able to solve the problem? You just have to look at it. If Adam Oshomole is, not uh, is no longer on the seat, then who is the next person to take charge? That is where the issue is supposed to start from. But, you know, for some political interest towards um, 2023, some people feel that uh, maybe they have the other way they can do it. Okay? And we gave them the chance. And they have done it. But now, the Supreme Court have already shown us the red signal. So what are we going to do? You don't need to make a sweeping decision to continue with what you have already planned. You sit down. Put good brain together, good head together. Let them look into it legally. Then and take the best decision for the party. Then three, let the party leaders come together, the founding fathers. Let them sit down and look at what is our first interest in forming this political party. We know 2023 is about like consuming the party, but the fact is this. The interest of the founding fathers is about how to salvage the nation. So going to 2023 should not allow individual interests or personal interests superseded that of the vision and ideas of the party leaders. So if we are to save the party now, what we need to do is to sit down and go back to the first place, just as Senator Marafa said, where Oshimole was sacked. Then who is the next in line to Adam Sushomole. Then, if the person is there, bring the person up. Because if you cannot say somebody is a, um, a committee, and a committee, another committee that has a constitutional power to sack 
National Working Com uh, uh, this is State Working Committee dissolved down to the world level. Okay, the Constitution says you cannot occupy two um, positions, executive position of the party and also of the government. Now, what do you need to do? Because some people are trying to argue for that he can do it, he is saved uh, by the Supreme Court judgment. How is he safe? It's been declared illegal because all the congresses that will be done, down to the uh, National Convention, who will forward the name to the INEC? Mm, who will sign it? Is this the Bini that will do that? This Save APC Now group, did you just come up this weekend, just before this weekend was the World Congresses were about to go down this weekend? Is it a lot of uh, issues of, um, you know, characterizing our party all this way? And we've been interacting among ourselves with the youth and try to see that this party is not just about today, it's about our future. Because we know how we labor to have brought this party on board. I was the state uh, uh, youth uh, coordinator for Buhari Support uh, Center, and I've also the Koji West uh, Zona Coordinator for Yayabelu uh, Support Group for President Momo Buhari in 2015, Koji Youth Arise Group. So we have been, you know, interacting among ourselves to see that this party become the future for us. The but, specific question is about um, But, you know, within this short period when the Supreme Court judgment came out, and we see counter-argument for and this and that, so we now see that we need to come together as a youth. So... This save APC now is a group that was just vetted immediately after the Supreme Court judgment to see that we can make an advocacy, we can also make persuasions and speak to the minds of our leaders to do the right thing. So and you have fears that the APC is in trouble and the congresses that were conducted over the weekend uh, could spell doom for the party. Is that correct? Of course. Of course, definitely to spare them for the party, aside of the internal issues that we already have it. I take it that you didn't participate in the Congresses then, did you? Well, I participated, but unfortunately, uh, in our state, we, the critical stakeholders, have been sidelined. And as I'm talking to you... By who? Of course, uh, the leader of the state is no other person than the governor, because I was his former special advisor on state capital and urban development, also, a uh, one time uh, SSO mobilization. So, in the stakeholder meeting that were called, there was no formal appointees that were called. Then, two, there are also other critical stakeholders and the founding father, former senator, former House of Rep, former assembly member, even in down to his former commissioner. They were not also called to the uh, stakeholder meeting. Then, in their various local government, there is also crisis, even among the GYB family, that you know, as we call him in our state, that is Governor Ayabelo. In uh, Yagba East, uh, is between the Commission of Finance and the SSG. In uh, Ijumu, it is between the Algon chairman, the executive chairman of the local government, uh, Honorable Tafik, uh, versus uh, Senator Smart Adiemi, um, the assembly members, the commissioners, and other uh, government appointees. They agree that it's going to be on consensus. But of course, some people have taken to their own directions doing different way within them. Then in my own local government, they agree on consensus, but the local government party chairman move from word to word and make sure that the chairman, the secretary, the youth leader are all given to him. Then some certain faces are also being removed. So as I'm talking to you in the state, it is like a three-way uh, parallel the uh, congresses, the GYV versus the GYB, and also other critical stakeholders who have been shut out either from the appointment or from even being carried along of um, taking a step that this is a party that they founded in the state. And most of all, we have suffered in the opposition for so long. Opposition? You're in the APC? I will suffer in the opposition in our state before the coming of the APC. So, but the APC came in now. We have not really benefited substantively as a party member. A lot of people have not benefited from the... So somehow you are still in opposition? Of course, we are still in opposition. So we now see that, no, we don't need to go back to another opposition again. What do we need to do? We need to find a way to save this party now, save APC now. Mm. That is the, the, the brain behind it. Uh, let me ask um, uh, Mr. Wango. I do not know how this uh, consensus versus, uh, you know, 
election, you know, usually goes within political parties. Uh, that's usually, uh, it's usually a big bone of contention as to whether or not those who will emerge from the Congresses will be elected via consensus or they will be elected uh, via elections. We've seen, uh, and oftentimes even the elections, there will be, <laughs> uh, you know, conversations as to whether they will happen, there will be direct uh, you know, primaries, primaries or they indirect. will be indirect primaries. And we saw how that did a number of parties uh, in uh, in the 2019 election. Some parties, uh, especially the APC, were not able to field candidates. Uh, some, in, some of their results were upturned and the opposing political party benefited as a result, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of this type of issues. I don't know what your thoughts are uh, with the methods with which political parties decide that candidates should emerge or, you know, uh, positions be filled within their parties? Mark, there are two issues that have, that um, honorable true up, which I can use to answer your question. The first is the whole idea of concept of leader, leader in the political party, founding member, founding leaders. That's an abnormality. It's an abnormality because the constitution of any political party has no position called leader. And there is no separation between party organization, party leadership, and the executive. The, collab the, the ambush, if you like, of the party structures by these so-called leaders, whether it's at the top or at the lower level, is part of the confusion that you have currently. So, the governors are emperors, not just in the political parties where they are. There is already a concession. So what do they do? Many of the people who contested, who are supposed to, the other word is giving. You say give, give. It's a contest. It should be a contest. Before you get to a consensus, there are contesting parties. Those contesting parties are brought together, and then there is a resolution. And that resolution is called consensus. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So that that so there is complete absence of contest. Many of the people who eventually didn't buy these forms by themselves. Okay. In many situations, we have seen these governors even buy forms for House of Assembly, House of Rep, and decide to give. So when you take away contests, the competitive nature of politics, whether it is in the primary, in the political parties, or outside of it, is completely lost. So the challenge that you are having is that you, you have exalted the feelings of leaders above the constitution. These parties have constitution. So when you allow the legal play, um, if you have 1,000 lawyers, they have 1,000 opinion. Yeah, but there are those who will say that not everything. I mean, even in, in, in a country, even in, I don't want to use the example of churches, but sometimes, you know, there are traditions, uh, things that are not clearly spelt out. Yes, there is a constitution that no, guides if everybody. You, if you have an abnormality, if you, if you have a contention, mm -hmm. if you have issues that are contentious, you don't rely on tradition. You now, when, you know, when you talk about the, the fact that there is no position of a leader spelled out in any party's constitution... No, so we have to be very clear how yeah. that affects the, the kind of thing that we're currently seeing. Because when you, when you venerate the feelings, emotions, and confection your, your activities around how people feel, then you take away the, the guiding principle which is your, your, your constitution. So if, you, if your feelings is not in, cons, in consonance with the guiding principles of our association, because we are coming together as an association, the challenge is that these parties don't even have members. Jokes, I mean, be in the sense in which you know how people are members of a political party. Pay your dues, you can then, you know, insist on your right as a member of a political party. But most of the time, you know what it is that the, the direct, what you see now as the Congress is a, is a festival. 
So there is no record. There is no ticking. There is nobody. So if you say you are APC member, you are APC member. Okay. But they had, they had a registration drive they, no, they, that not is so long that ago. Is, that is going on. So they say 27 members. But I can tell you, practically speaking, that at the end of the day, some people who you see today in this Congress, you also see them in the Congress of another political party tomorrow. So the, the challenge is that we do not have strong political parties in the sense in which it is known. So you have you have elevated political party to taking the ownership away from people and surrendered it to these leaders that you talk about. And what is curious for me is whether it's Buni, whether these issues that have been challenged today are not new. It didn't take, I mean, the, the guy has been in, in that position for close to a year or more than a year. And so all the hula balu coming now is a contest of power blocks. Okay, so throwing in everything they have into the issues. But we must be able to take a, 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 a different stance and look at the issues from the point of the laws that will govern them, the laws that they have agreed for themselves that this is on the basis on which we are going to you know, congregate. Um, and so if there's a violation of that, the thing to do is not to begin to talk about tradition and is to say, go back to your... Like, but like I said, if you have an intervention... If you solve that problem, get out and organize a proper substantive leadership for the political party. We'll take a break at this point. When we come back, we'll allow Honorable um, Aaron intervene in the matter. Please stay with us. Are we examining the fallout from the World Congresses of the Upper Progressives Congress that happened over the weekend. And we still have with us in the studio Honorable Unda Aaron, who is the Director General of the Save APC Now Group, and also Mr. Ezenwan Wago, who is the Executive Director, Peering Advocacy and Advancement Center in Africa. He is also the convener of Say No Campaign Nigeria. So let me quickly come to you, Honorable Aaron. Um, you wanted to quickly intervene on what... Um, um, Mr. Ezenwa had to say about uh, congresses and usually what they mean for party politics in Nigeria. Yeah, he was talking about, um, you know, leaders and trying to really uh, take them out of the main issues uh, in contest. Uh, the fact is this, when you have a political uh, crisis, as a political party or a political group, all you need to do is applying... Uh, a political solution. So you don't leave your fate in the hand of a, a judge or some legal team to decide it for you. So that is why I say that uh, there is a need for the founding father to come together, uh, the likes of uh, President Momo Dibuari, Bola Metinibu, and some leaders from uh, the you know, the legacy side. Well, you heard, you heard him say, I mean, I, I, I'm sure that they all, so, we all understood I, I, so, what sorry, you meant by the founding fathers. Sorry, the, the fact is this, a political party has a true identity, the natural person and the artificial person. Mm -hmm. So these both must go hand in hand. So now when there is issue, it is a human being, it is the conduct of human being that led to this crisis. Now when he says that, you know, there is no uh, role there's no role spelled out for a leader in, the, in your party constitution. Do you agree with him in that? No, the, the rules are already spelled out, but people are only trying to manipulate the constitution of the party for their own personal interest. But in this, um, uh, in this situation, it is very dangerous for anybody to manipulate the looming danger in the APC. That is why we say save APC now. Come together. What is even, we have to look at the remote cost. Then when we look at the remote cost, we will not look at the immediate cost. Then we will be able to make quantitative time series analysis from the past to the present and to the future mm -hmm. and be able to take a decision that will put the party at a safe side as we move into 2023. How did the registration in your party go? Because, you know, we do know that there were con issues of contention arising from the regi re-registration of party members uh, when that registration process was going on? Um, you know, just like I earlier said, for some individual political interest, you know, if not, there, is, there wasn't any need for such um, even registration because the issue that uh, arose from the sacking of uh, Adams Oshomole wasn't about 
the registration issue. It is about the, the leadership of the National Working Committee. And all we need to do is just to get it right. But you know, because politicians want to buy time and they want to manipulate some certain processes and to have the structures for themselves, so they need to bring in something on the table mm -hmm. and to be window dressing around. So that is all what the um, registration is all about. But um, regardless... But you, you participated in that? Of course, you have to do it. If oh. you're a party member and uh, they have taken that decision, you just have to stand because in this politics, a one meeting you miss can cost you everything you have worked for. So if they take one step, if you know the step is not good, but one way or the other, you just have to put the step there with them. Mm -hmm. So that is what the politics is all about. Let's go to Lagos now. I'm sure that Ayo has something for us. Ayo. Well, yes. First, I would have loved to ask her questions of uh, Honorable Aaron, but we'll come to that one. Uh, right now, you know, we talked about the fact that the NERD strike uh, was to begin. We had a doctor talk to us about that this morning. They said it will begin 8 a.m. today. Well, it's uh, 34 minutes into that strike as at this moment, and our Channel TV correspondent in Imo State, Itokwe Kuto, is ready. He is at the Federal Medical Center, Owari. Itokwe, uh, how far so far? What's, uh, can you report or confirm that the strike has indeed started, as the doctors say? Um, good morning. I, uh, I'm right here at the Federal Medical Center here in Owe, the Imo State Capital. And right behind me is the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors Lounge, where the resident doctors normally converge every day. And as you can see behind me, it's empty. Um, I was talking to some of the um, resident doctors, especially the, um, the chairman here in Imo State, Jude. Obu. And he says they are in line with um, the directive of the National Executive Council to down tools till further notice. They've complied. And um, I've gone around the hospital this morning. Some patients, if you see in front of me right now, there's, um, there's a lounge there where some patients are sitting. And um, the um, doctor says the only consultant doctors will be re responding to um, the the patients right there, but for them, they are down tools um, to further notice in line with the directive of the National Executive Council. Well, that's a very, very touching and dangerous one, Itokwe. I'm just wondering what the uh, take of the government would be on this case right now. How is the state government, uh, if you have any information at all, reacting to this development? Okay, yeah, um, for now, I've not really... Um, gotten anything from the state government in, um, in relation to this new development. But before now, you know, it's been, um, there's been a series of meetings um, between the state government and the National um, um, Association of Resident Doctors in Imo State, and particularly over their welfare. And I, I, I can authoritatively say if there's any um, latest meeting in between both parties, but um, as these um, developments um, on foods, we'll, we'll get on that story too. Uh, well, certainly we will. And you just mentioned the fact that patients are already in dire straits, so to speak. Um, what do you expect might happen today uh, as the strike begins, especially in terms of healthcare delivery to patients, both inpatients and outpatients? Okay, you know, definitely in all um, health institutions where you have um, resident doctors, most times they, 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 they have um, the highest number of, um, um, of members and um, they attend to patients even more than um, most of these um, consultants. So it's going to be, a, because right now I have um, over, if I'm, if I'm not, um, not to, I have over um, 30 patients seated around there and um, normally if they are resident doctors you know um it will make it easier for the patients to um get um treatment and quality health care but for now since these um, resident doctors are not working today then the the job the task for the consultant doctors will be much more than um before 
So, but um, we'll still go ahead to speak to the management of the Federal Medical Center, Oweri, to see what and how they are going to handle this case today. Well, Itokwe, it definitely is something very, very troubling, especially as we hear that cases of COVID-19, especially the third uh, strain, Delta strain, is getting worse by the day. We can only imagine how people are taking this on board. And of course, you know, all those other infectious diseases such as cholera and all of that. Uh, are, are there spikes in the state that could worsen as a result of this strike? I didn't get that. Can you I said, are there spikes in cases of infectious diseases that, you know, would get worse as a result of this strike? Yeah, definitely, you know, um, the third wave of um, the COVID-19 is here and um, the, um, the tax force on one hand is trying to um, put all modalities in place and with the state government to ensure that um, this third wave is um, um, it's been handled just like it did in the second wave, and definitely with the um, strike, it's gonna it's going to um, have more issues around because um, when these resident doctors are not on ground to attend to um, cases like this, then it's gonna be more um, more problematic for for the healthcare system here in Imo State. Well, Ejokwe, we trust that you please stay safe yourself and especially being that you are reporting from a health facility now and with the, with the strike and all, just please do stay safe. Thank you very much for your reporting and uh, we trust we'll get more updates as events unfold. Well, that's Itokwe Kute, uh, Channel TV correspondent in Imo State. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to take on one or two others before the end of this program. But uh, the, uh, uh, let me ask uh, back to the previous conversation. Honorable Nda, uh, 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 I'm just wondering, uh, when you said the other time in response to a question mark or threw at you, you said um, your group, which is in the ruling party in the state, uh, in opposition in the state, and that you have not benefited enough from the ruling party. I'm just wondering, what kind of benefits are you expecting that you're not getting? Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Please go ahead if you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it number one? Um, the benefits in politics is not in uh, heaven, it's here on earth. Uh, because we are seeing those who are there who are benefiting. So, a lot of people suffer and labored to have brought this APC to be, most especially in our state. For 13 years, we we're under the, the PDP rule. And we were hoping and laboring, patiently waiting, that when we eventually will come to the power, we will smile. But today I can tell you that uh, we are not smiling. You know, some of us have served in government. We don't have something tangible to show for it. Others who even labor, they are not even lucky like us to have even come close to ourselves and in the government. So, and a lot of them are not really, really in good health. Some have even died. Some even died about um, three days ago. So for how long are we going to continue like this? I think we Skiing. want the voice of reasoning to sign yeah, into their Just mind. one second, uh, Honorable Aaron. The question I'm asking is, what specific kinds of benefits are you talking about? I am talking about political benefit, which is well, um, well understood by all politicians. So maybe for you as a media person, you may not understand. But we as a politicians... We understand what is political benefit. And again, another side of it, um, a lot of the funding members you know, are not being just, carried just, along. Just a second, a Honorable Aaron. You know, there is also a lot of talk about uh, so many people wanting to get into politics and knowing how to uh, contribute their quota to the service of fatherland. So that's why I'm asking, maybe if it is, uh, because I'm wondering, I, I thought that, I mean, um, dividends of democracy should go around to everybody, not just to the politicians. So that's why I'm asking if you would be specific 
if you, if you wish to be specific, exactly what kind of okay. benefits are you talking about, given that dividends of democracy is supposed to go round? Do you, would you say that these benefits also include uh, dividends of democracy to all the people, or you're talking about something exclusively for the politicians? Uh, just like you said, the dividends of democracy is supposed to go around. And if you look at it, you take it in a two traffic. Uh, one, the generality of the people, but two, the party member. Because the party member risked their life, they risked their life, stood for the party, canvassed, campaign for the candidates, spend their money as well. Nobody is trying to say that you want to get something illegal from the government, but there are something legal from the government that you can get. There are patronage you can get from the government. Some of us are business people. Some of us, we have company that run businesses, but you know, there is no patronage. Few people are only benefiting from the system. And this is not only in Kogi State, it's also happening at the national level. And we look at it that this crisis that is engulfing the party, if we do not speak out to save APC now, then when we, our, our own time will come? So it is in view of this that we are making this advocacy, we are making this cry. We know Buni have done a lot for us in the party within this uh, short period of his uh, time. Um, but, you know, the right thing needs to be done. The, 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 the feature of the party, the party is bigger than anybody. The party is an artificial body, and the party must, must also outlive the Mr. President. You could also be hearing different versions of a prophet of doom. This one says APC will crash. This one says APC will not live before the Buhari. But the fact is this. If we don't do the right thing, this prophecy might come to pass. So on the issue of the benefit, just as you know that dividends of democracy go around to the people, it also have another side that come to the politicians because it is the politicians that risk their life to stand for the, the candidates of the party, work for the party, spend their money for the party. So, and most politicians you see, they have one area or the other that they can function, they can do business with the government, either on the capacity of being uh, appointed or on the capacity of being patronized. So, and the major challenge and the cry of most especially uh, Nigerian youth, they have not been rewarded. They have not been recognized adequately within the party which they labor and enthroned or abetted. So if you check one of the chunk groups of the people that brought President Muhammad Buhari to power are the youths. But today, if you look around, you hardly see the youth in any prominent places. Mm. And the, Let uh, me quickly ask Mr. Ezenwa what he makes of your your expectation, if, this is a, if these are the expectations that politicians have, and oftentimes, you know, this is the reality, um, how are political parties expected to manage these expectations at the same time manage expectations of the people who elected them into office? Well, I think there is the first uh, leg of the conversation which we didn't uh, completely trash, the issue about leaders. The, the constitution of political parties have board of trustees. So it is still within the confine of the political parties to take different hierarchy. So what happens is that when you subvert the law and order regime within the political party, you now want extraneous uh, influences to help you resolve the issue. The board of trustees is, the, is, is where you find those kind of people that he's talking about. And so if you have issues with the National Working Committee, and the, the NEC, the National Executive Council, which is the highest organ of the political party, you can, you, can, you can go to the Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees can then give you the powers to you know, constitute some of those issues that you are talking about without going to extraneous uh, issues. Now, the, the challenge and the burden of our, of our governance system is that it is, it is predicated on cronism and, and patronage. And, and that, that itself is the big challenge. Okay? People, yes, if, if you, uh, the idea of contributing. Mr. Ezeno, I'm going to let you expatiate on your point when we come back from this break. We really need to take this break. Well, just before we went on that break, Mr. Ezeno Wago was about to shed some light on the challenge we have with political parties. So I was talking about cronism and patronage and, you know, how to balance that with merits. Mm. 
uh, that's the challenge of governance, that's the challenge of leadership. Um, so when when you have a warped sense of entitlement, uh, you, you, the, the involvement in politics is not an investment. It's, it's like a, your, your colleague from Lagos was saying, it's about also service. It's about service. If you have a second address, if you, if you have other things that you do, you understand, you, 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 you moderate those expectations and then place it on deliverables for public good. What does that mean? You say it's not an investment. Is, that, is it a, it's not an investment or it should not be an investment? It is not. It, if you, if once you have the mentality that is an investment, that's why people go to sell their houses. When you hear banks funding, uh, you know, politicians. No, these are so. This is the reason why people steal money in public office. How much is the in the the real the the real appurtenances of this office? What does it come to? The real official, as as SA special advisor. What is your salary? Okay, but so. If the reason you are invested, you've been made SA and you are paid that salary, okay? That's not, that's not. People sell their houses. People, like you said, the banks invest, you know, the, the rise of negative godfatherism. All of those things are part of the challenge that you are seeing. Because people now see it that, okay, he's putting this and get this. That expectation needs to be cleared. That if we continue like that, the challenge that we have is that until we understand that if you benefit in the sense in which I understand it from what I'm hearing here now, if you benefit and have a cast to, okay, but the hospital within your community cannot serve the general public. And then you, when you have allergies, you travel out of the country. The majority of the people who live within that environment cannot access good medical it becomes a challenge for you. If we have bad roads, okay, even if you drive the best of the cars that you can think about, once you can't drive on those roads, the public good is not served. So the balance is what I'm talking about, that we have, we have placed a lot of emphasis on this entitlement that most politicians have. And that's the reason they become very desperate. That's the reason they become, it becomes a do or die thing. If it is seen from the prism in which, um, it, 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 prism of service, prism of, 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 of um, engagement, we are li likely going to see less crisis than we're seeing. I'm going to ask you to have, you know, 30 seconds to quickly wrap this up. Um, what you, do you agree with his point? And if that is the situation, how do you think we can come around it? Um, I don't really agree with the situation, I uh, mean, with his uh, submission uh, in, in total, because the, even the constitutions recognize the competitive nature of running a political party. So, and you also need to fund such a political party. And it is people who brought out their own personal resources to invest in the political party. If you listen to... He says it should, not be, it should not be an investment. Well, there is... Okay, how are you going to run it? How are you going to run it? It should not be seen as an investment. It is not being an investment, rather. But the if, issue is that there is something you need to contribute to make it work. So it is not about investment per se, but it is about contribution for the success. You need a structure. You need a vehicle. You need mobilization, you need publicity. How do you get it? There is no any allocations from the government to a political party to run the day-to-day -day businesses of the political party. So in such a way, people make personal uh, contribution so to run the party. And if they do that, when the success come, of course, even the constitutions know that you become a president, you become a governor, you become a chairman. The constitutions expressly spelled out what you earn. So... It is not a charity organization. Mm. Well, I know that this conversation will go on uh, because the World Congresses have just been concluded. We haven't heard the last of them. Uh, and I know that this conversation is something that will be very interesting to, uh, should be of interest to majority of Nigerians. Let us see what eventually comes of it.
Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on Sunrise Early this morning. Honorable Unda Aaron, he's the Director General of Save APC Now and also former Senior Special Assistant on Mobilization to Governor Yayabelo. Thank you for coming on Sunrise Early. And uh, Mr. Ezemawagu is the Executive Director, Peering Advocacy and Advancement Center in Africa and also the convener of Say No Campaign Nigeria. Thank you for coming on Sunrise Early as well. Thank you, Thank you very much. We want our leaders to do the right thing. I'm sorry we took me out party. of time. Thank you so oh, much. Well, we have much. a few emails now. This is from Frank.